Good afternoon and welcome to another one of our online events. Wow, we are already on the second uh, event of 2021. Days are really flying by. Our teams and we at Travel the Unknown thank all of you for your support and kind words of appreciation and encouragement we have been receiving from you. I'm Sunita, one of the travel specialists. Jordan, a land well known since the biblical times. Amman is counted amongst the oldest cities on the planet. A small country with many well-known sites, yet there is so much more of this incredible land that will take you by surprise. Be it discovering the Crusader castles, Greek or Roman ruins, hiking in Dana or Fainan, or snorkeling in Aqaba, the country offers it all. Among the more unique experiences are exploring Petra, sipping tea with a nice book in hand while floating on the Dead Sea, or landing somewhere in Wadi Ram, not on a spaceship, but more a traditional hot air balloon. We are very pleased to have with us today, David Sines. He is the one who's <laughs> making us turn green with envy sitting in Wadi Ram <laughs> with all the sunshine around him. He is the Director of International Marketing in Travel the Unknown's Jordan Operations. Having spent most of his life in the UK, he worked for the Jordan uh, Tourism Board uh, in London between 2001 and 2011. He has been promoting and developing tourism to Jordan for almost 20 years. Having visited the country nearly 50 times, David is not only an expert on all things Jordanian, but has a great understanding of what makes this little kingdom a fabulous holiday destination. Nothing beats sitting around the fire with a group of people or being invited by a Bedouin for tea. As David says, a trip to Jordan is always full of unexpected surprises. The presentation will be followed by a very quick overview of our tours and a question answer round. So may I please request you all to keep your mics uh, muted and videos off at all times and do send us any questions through the chat box. We will take them up during the question answer round. Now I shall hand you over to David. Thank you. Over to you, David. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, Ala wasalam. Welcome to Jordan. Um, this evening, um, we're going to be showing you some of the main sites of Jordan and linking them together for a virtual tour of the country. We'll include all the big hitters, Petra, Jirash, Wadi Rum and the Dead Sea, as well as some of off the beaten track sites and activities that are well worth a visit. So the first picture you can see on your screen is of Amman. Then we go to the Roman city of Umkais up in the very north of Jordan. We're then going to look at Jirash, probably the biggest Roman city in Jordan and was part of the Roman Decapolis. In fact, all the Roman cities in Jordan were part of the Roman Decapolis. Then we're going to take you out to the desert castles and look at the caravanserais there from the Umayyad period. And then for those of you that are interested in the, the green side of Jordan, we're going to look at the nature reserve of Dana, uh, the biosphere, um, which is a beacon of community and ecotourism in Jordan. We're then going to have a look at the Dead Sea, the lowest place on earth, and yes, you can really float in its waters. We're going to look at Petra, the jewel in Jordan's crown, and then we're going to go to my favourite place, Wadi Rum. In fact, I don't know why I say it's my favourite place, because lots of places in Jordan are my favourite place. That's just how it is when you go to Jordan. So a little bit of background. Um, if you don't know, from the very north in Umm Qais to the bottom in Aqaba, Jordan's about six hours long by car. So it's really easy to drive around the country. And it means that when you go to Jordan on a tour, most of your time is actually spent visiting sites and not traveling. Jordan has a king and a queen. The king is half British. English is very widely spoken. So whoever you meet, you'll be able to have some form of interaction with them. About six million people in Jordan, uh, made up of Muslims, Christians, and, and other denominations. Jordan is mentioned in the Bible. Moses was there. Aaron, his brother, is buried in Petra. Lot, um, Abraham, Jesus, and John the Baptist all were in Jordan. So when you go to Jordan, you're in fantastic company. Who's lived there? Well, the Nabataeans were, were, were the people that um, developed Petra. The Romans, the early Christians, and the Ottomans. In the since Lawrence of Arabia was filmed, Jordan has started to develop a, a very strong culture of filming and has a good film industry. 
to Lawrence of Arabia, Indiana Jones, The Martian, The Mummy and Transformers were all filmed in Jordan using lots of local staff and technical people. Few facts about Jordan. If you sat in this tent with these guys, they would love to have you there. You'd get the first pour of the teapot. They'd speak to you about your family. They'd speak to you about your friends. Jordan, people say they're friendly, but they're more than friendly. They're warm and sincere people. And wherever you go, when you speak to people, you will realize that very quickly. As we said earlier, English is widely spoken. And there's some fantastic sites and sites, sites to visit and sites to see. And best of all, Jordan is only five hours from London. OK, so you're now looking at a video of a mom which shows you the centre of the town and the citadel. Um, from here, we're going to take you into the modern day bits of Amman. So as we said earlier, Amman's about the people. It's about going out, engaging with the people, shopping in the souk, going to the local neighbourhoods um, and having some fantastic food. It really is about getting to know the people that are there because it's the people of Jordan that make it so very special. Um case in the very north, one of the smaller cities of the Roman Capitalists, but very, very interesting because of its position overlooking the Sea of Galilee and the Golan Heights. Um, a lot of the city is made out of black basalt, which makes it very unique to um, Roman architecture. And then here we are in Jerash, the city that really um, is the jewel in the crown of the Roman Decapolis in Jordan. And as I said, if it, Jordan wasn't famous for Petra, it would probably be famous for Jerash. Jordan changes with the scenes, the, 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 um, the seasons. So if you want to experience Jordan as a desert land, then the time to go is October. But if you really want to see the north of Jordan with spring flowers and the desert full of crocuses and the strawberry plants and the black iris, which is the uh, plant of Jordan, then you need to go in the spring. March, April and May are perfect for those times. From Jirash, we go to Ajloun. Ajloun is a crusader castle um, built by Saladin, so it's Islamic architecture, and it's a great example of stronghold art architecture. Um, Ajloun is located in a pretty forest um, and stands amongst pine and carrot trees in the north of Jordan. In fact, many people say that when they're in the north of Jordan, they feel like they're in Mediterranean Europe. It's very different to how people imagine Jordan. Even the food is different. So well worth eating a traditional meal with a local family. Here you're going to see a few, there's a few pictures on this slide. You've got some beekeepers and you've got a meal being shared by people um, in a home. Um, Northern Jordan is developing, it's a really strong base for community tourism. Um, and it's something that we support as the team in Jordan. And it's a great way for you to spend a little bit of money, and enjoy really local services. And all the profit goes straight back to the local communities. These aren't businesses that are owned by individuals. These are businesses that are owned by the community. And it's something that we support wholeheartedly. The desert castles out in the Eastern desert. Once again, not many tour operators visit the Eastern desert. So if you want to go to the Eastern desert, then this is good because we love to take people there. Um, they're called desert castles, but really they're hunting lodges and caravanserais, and they date back to the 8th, 8th century. There's some fantastic vistas there, big 180 degree horizons, nothing for mild, hard hamada and black basalt desert. Very different to Wadi Rum, very different, different to other deserts that you might visit. Um, the three main sites there are um, Kazaharani, and um, Khaza Amra and the um, Azraq Castle. Azraq Castle um, was where Lawrence started to write The Seven Pillars of Wisdom. He spent some time there. So it's well worth a visit if you um, have read um, Lawrence of Arabia. The Dead Sea, the lowest place on earth. It really is a must. Um, I've always said that not everyone can reach the highest point on earth and climb Mount Everest, but everyone can get to the lowest. It's a strange feeling floating effortlessly on the water. Um, but if you're there and you're spending the night there, then I would suggest that you 
miss the crowds, float very early in the morning or at sunset, or do both, as you may never return. Floating is a unique experience, and there's nothing better than being one of a very few people in the Dead Sea having a float very early in the morning or at sunset. One night at the Dead Sea is like a complete holiday um, because it's very relaxing and there's a lot of oxygen rich air there. Um, they say that the Queen of Sheba used to bathe in the water of the Dead Sea, which is why she was so beautiful. Here's a couple of pictures of the hotels in Jordan. So um, the top one is of one of the luxury, the top one on the bottom right are luxury hotels in Jordan. And on the left um, is uh, a group that wanted, didn't want to visit the hotels, but really wanted to have the Dead Sea and the mud experience. Um, and you can stop by the sides of the RSC and nature reserve there and cover yourself in mud and have a bathe in the Dead Sea. Biblical Jordan. Lots of tourists visit Jordan because of its biblical background, especially from the United States. Um, Mount Nebo is where Moses first fought, saw the promised land from, a land that he never entered. And Mount Nebo is his final resting place. Um, his final resting place. The site at Mount Nebo is run by the Franciscans and it has the best preserved mosaic in Jordan. It's like a pure carpet and it really is something that we recommend that people visit. Madaba is a small Christian town and is home to some of the most important early Christian mosaics in the world. Um, it's a charming town and great for walking around. And the bottom picture on this slide is of the mosaic map in, in Madaba. Now this map in other countries would be in a museum under six inches of plate glass, but in Jordan it's in the church of St George, covered in a rug and the church is used daily. The map is a depiction of the, uh, the map shows the Holy Land as it was around the time of Christ. So all the sites on the map are places that Jesus or were mentioned, visited or were mentioned in the Bible. At the center of the map that you're looking at at the moment is Jerusalem. So in the sixth and seventh centuries, the map was used by pilgrims to find their way around the Holy Land. And today, very similarly, the map is still used by tourists as they travel around Jordan. The Dana Nature Reserve. For those of you that want to do some walking or enjoy eco-tourism, the Dana Nature Reserve is a must. Um, it's the flagship reserve for sustainable tourism and community tourism in Jordan. Um, this was the first community eco-tourism project and started in Jordan in 1994. And it was a model for conservation and socio-economic development, meeting the needs of both nature and the people. And it provided jobs for the locals and created the local community to move back to the region. In 1994, Jordan was way ahead of the ecotourism game, and it still is in some respects. Jordan is a great place for ecotourism, and there are six nature reserves in total in Jordan that you can stay at and enjoy tourism activities from. At the other end of the Dana Nature Reserve, literally six hours walk down the hill, is Finan Eco Lodge. It's completely off grid. It's lit by candles at night and it's supported by the local Bedouin who provide the activities. It was built in the early 2000s and it's become a major success and has won numerous awards. It's supported by the local Bedouin, Will Be real Bedouin, who still move from the valley to escarpment with the seasons and provide some of the local activities for when you're there. Um, I really think that Finan is a beacon of hope in Jordan for developing tourism that really supports the locals. It's a step forward from Dana because it's newer and more modern and it, it has really provided jobs for, very, for lots of local people and Bedouins. Shobat Castle. It's a crusader castle built in 1115. It was attacked by Saladin many times and um, the Crusaders lost to Saladin in 1189. It's a beautiful castle with evocative views, a perfect stopping point located just before Petra. Much less visited than the bigger Crusader castle in Jordan and Karak, but in our opinion it's a much better off the beaten track option and it provides a much nicer um, travel experience. So on to Petra, the reason why most people visit Jordan. As we've said before, it's the jewel in Jordan's crown. And we're gonna show you Petra. 
as best we can with some help of some video and the map. The walk into Petra is about a mile. In fact, it's officially 1.2 kilometers long, and it's probably be the most remarkable 1.2 kilometers that you'll walk in, the, walk in the world. Hemmed in by the mountains, the crack in the rock, as you walk through it, you think you will get there to the treasury, you know what's at the end, but actually it takes longer than you think with the guide explaining the history of Petra and the history of the sea. And then as you come in, turn around the corner, you finally come into view of the treasury. Now, I think the thing to remember about Petra, if you didn't know, is that Petra is not a built city. It was carved by hand. And although Pet the treasury is the most impressive tomb, it's not the biggest. And if you're wondering how big Petra is, well, there's 800 monuments in Petra. It was the capital of the Nabataean Empire, and then it was finally taken over by the Romans and then the early Christians. It was lost to the outside world for over a thousand years, but still inhabited by local Bedouin and found again by Burkhardt in 1812. The biggest facade in Petra is right at the end of the site and is about six miles from the hotels where you'll be staying. It's 45 metres wide by 47 metres high and all hand carved out of the rock. To give it some scale, the front door is as high as a standard UK house. There's a fantastic cafe just out of view. So once you've made the climb to the monastery, which is about 800 steps, you'll have somewhere to uh, sit down and get a nice hot mint tea or a cold drink. It's usually the last monument people see in Petra before they turn around and walk back out. But it can be the first one you see if you enter Petra by the back door. Petra by night. If you like visiting Petra by day, you'll love visiting Petra by night. It really is a fantastic experience. <clears throat> Petra, the treasury and the Sikh are lit up by 2000 candles in brown paper bags. And magical if you do it right, but a bit of a scrum if you don't. We always suggest to people that they join the main group that goes in, and then when they get to the start of the seat, they hang back and they wait for the whole of the group to move forward and they wait five or five or ten minutes, and then they walk down slowly through the seat, just lit by candles in brown paper bags. It really is mesmerizing, mesmerizing. Um, and if you do the same at the end and walk back at after the crowds have left, you'll have a very, very good experience of Petra by night. We mentioned Petra by the back door earlier. Um, this enters via Little Petra, and it's about a three hour walk from Little Petra to the monastery. You can see some of the pictures there, and you'll see the red arrow at the bottom, which highlights the start of the monastery that you can see. This is a fantastic walk, and it's a walk that isn't covered by every tour operator but we like to do it because it gives you a unique, unique perspective on Petra. And we know that you're going to be there a couple of days, so you'll get to walk through the Sikh anyway, whether that's by night or early uh, or another morning. Now, as I said earlier, this is probably my favorite place, but there are many places in Jordan, my favorite place. Um, home of Lawrence of Arabia, it influenced the seven pillars of wisdom, wisdom and it's loved by Hollywood. Home of the Bedouin, Spending the night is a beautiful experience. And if you get the chance, you can climb a mountain or go up in a balloon flight. <clears throat> we suggest that people arrive about four o'clock in the afternoon so they can still feel the full heat of the desert. When you arrive, the desert looks washed out, the colors aren't very great, and it feels like it's an enduring place to be, very hot and oppressive. But as the time changes and the evening comes on and the temperature drops, the colors change until the full magnificence of the desert opens up before you. The colors became darker and they become richer until at night time when the stars come out and you sit around the campfire and you drink tea and enjoy the, the experience of being in the desert at night. If you're brave and I recommend you should be, I would suggest you pull your sleeping mat or bag out of the, the tent and sleep outside of your tent and really look up at the night sky and enjoy the shooting stars and the star show that will be there. If you do that, I'm convinced it will be a memory that will be, will be your most lasting memory of Jordan and something that will be one of your greatest travel experiences. In the very south of Jordan, we have Aqaba, our little window to the Red Sea, Jordan's Red Sea Riviera. It's a very relaxed coastal city, 
has a great range of hotels and it's a brilliant place to finish a holiday. It has the best weather in Jordan year round. Um, so whether you're going to Jordan in the spring or the autumn or you go around Christmas time, a few days on the beach in Aqaba is a fantastic option. You can do some snorkeling, you can do some swimming, you can do some scuba diving or you can just sit back and relax in the hotel. Aqaba is great because it's fairly small and it's easy to walk around. There are lots of restaurants, there's a great souk and lots of cheap eats and fine dining. So you can really get to know Jordan. Having travelled around it, you can then spend time in Aqaba and meet some more of Jordan's fantastic people. Travelling through Jordan at the moment. Um, in the current climate and with COVID, Jordan has been awarded safe travels by the WTTC um, because of all the steps that have been put in place. Um, I think rather than dwelling on what's happening, at, what's happening now, um, we need to think about the future. And the future is that the rules and regulations are changing on a daily basis. What I can tell you is that Jordan is taking this very seriously. The hotels are being cleaned with hospital grade disinfectants. There's hand, hand sanitizer at every entrance and in all the rooms. And the restaurants that we choose and we work with have increased their sanitation and the cleanliness of the restaurants is second to none. Your transportation inside your vehicle, it will be cleaned daily. And, and your driver and guide will be PCR tested before the trip and, until, um, and they will be vaccinated quickly as well. Um, some, of these some of these are guidelines and some will form the basis of Jordan tourism for the years to come. Face masks might not be needed in 2022, but we know the new level of hygiene is bound to stick. For example, your car will be cleaned every day in perpetuity for moving forward. Hopefully the breaking of bread with groups of people will be back as this is how all Jordanians like to offer hospitality. And we think that in the coming months, things will change fairly quickly in Jordan. Um, Jordan's only just started vaccinating people, but 17,000 people have already been vaccinated, which is quite a lot in a small country, as well as all the key staff in the, in the hospitals as well and the surgeries. So Jordan is doing its very best it can to get on top of this. And actually it's been a, a country that has um, maintained the virus very, very well. Thank you for listening today. Um, I'm sorry there was a mishap with the presentation at the very beginning, but um, I hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to welcoming you to Jordan in the very near future. Thank you so much, uh, David. That was absolutely fascinating. And thank you everyone um, for bearing with us while this was being fixed because sometimes videos can slow down um, this uh, slideshow. And, um, but you know, Jordan is one of those places which is all about the sites and the landscapes. And it is so hard not to show it on video because one or two pictures cannot really do justice to what you can see there as you might have seen in this fascinating presentation. So time for me to bring up my slides and quickly take you through our tours. And after that, we shall have uh, the question answer round. So let's do the screen share here now. Uh, we start with Land of Bedouins, which is one of our most popular tours. And uh, it's an 11 day duration uh, trip and um, it covers the main highlights and also take you, takes you to some of the offbeat areas. So all in all, it's a good blend of all kinds of experiences, uh, a taster of all kinds of experiences that you can enjoy there. We done two trips in April as well as in October. Then we have uh, Petra and Beyond, which is uh, mainly an archaeology focused trips. So here the um, uh, emphasis is on visiting all the archaeological sites as well as the castles around the country. And uh, this can be organized because it's a private trip. It can be organized uh, any time of the year, though we do recommend um, steering clear of the hot summer months and winter time. It does get extremely cold um, in Jordan. Uh, in fact, Amman is known to have snow also occasionally. Uh, then we have classical Jordan, which is a good first timers trip. It takes you to all the main sites and it's a lovely six day trip. So a good taster of Jordan. This again is operated as a private tour. Jordan is two hours ahead of GMT and there are di direct flight options from uh, UK and Europe, European countries. Um, you can get a one month visa on arrival. The 
there is a cost to getting the visa on arrival. We give an additional service for our clients. Once the tour is booked, we take your passport details and organize a visa for you, and uh, which is free of charge then. So it always makes sense to do it along when, uh, with booking your tour, and then you don't have to pay for it. And uh, the Jordan in Dinar is the currency. ATMs are available in the bigger cities, and credit cards are also accepted at most places. The best months to travel are October, November, or March to May. In fact, we are hoping, as David mentioned, they have started vaccinating people, and so has UK. So uh, you never know, in the next month or so, by the time the travel corridors open, uh, Jordan may start welcoming UK clients. And we our trip, uh, the April trip, Land of Bedouins tour, is already a guaranteed trip. So you never know, by then everything might be up and running, and uh, you could travel as early as in April. So now time for some questions. And David, may I uh, request you to join us, please, for the question answer round? I think you'll have to unmute yourself, David. I, I've, I've, um, I've unmuted myself here. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can now. Thank you. Okay. All right. So the first question, is Jordan an expensive country? Um, no, not really. I mean, I think um, Jordan is um, developing all the time and therefore it depends how much you want to spend. Um, if you want to go out and eat fine dining in Amman, then it can be quite expensive. But there's always a range of restaurants between five and 20 pounds a head um, for great meze, fantastic experiences um, that you can um, go to. Um, buying some goods on the streets or some nice uh, handicraft to send home aren't particularly expensive either. And all the museums, if you wanted to add an extra, to, an extra um, museum in your visit, then those costs are fairly, fairly low as well. So no, I don't think Jordan's expensive at all. Um, but if you want to have really fantastic food, it's there and you can spend money. Oh yeah, food is absolutely amazing. And I think in the uh, downtown areas in Amman and uh, even Aqaba and all, yeah, I think it is. And, and you find all ranges, you find the upmarket restaurants, you find the regular restaurants. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now, Wadi Ram appears to be a very large area. So mostly, why do you recommend one night? I mean, would, would spending any extra nights help? I think it depends on what you want to achieve out of going to the desert. If you want to do some desert walking and maybe some scrambling, and I'm not the most active person in the world, but I've climbed to the top of some of the quite high mountains in Wadi Ram because mainly it's walking and a little bit of hand and holding to get yourself up there. So if you want to do that, then I think a couple of nights in Wadi Rum would, would be fantastic. That would give you the experience of walking and some climbing and maybe a, a camel ride. But I think at the very least, I think you need to spend the night there because I think that gives you the desert experience. And the desert is something that you have to enjoy, but to enjoy it, you need to be there when it's, when it's not very enjoyable at maybe two in the afternoon or three in the afternoon when it's very hot and then get the enjoyment through the evening. You have to really understand what the desert's about, I think. And the desert is about enduring and seeing how it changes in a 24-hour period or a 10-hour period. Well, that sounds good, really. I think that's why, because uh, we have more of private options than anybody wanting a tailor-made trip uh, and interested in spending time there or kind of uh, climbing uh, mm. on those uh, dunes and hills, I think they, they can definitely spend longer. We and also visit, when we're in Wadi Rum, we also visit a very local traditional Bedouin family um, and they make bread and tea for you. Um, so that's a, that's, a really, that's a really nice experience as well because it is, this, that's a very traditional um, Bedouin experience. Um, and uh, they, they'll have some goats there and uh, the ladies will get to meet the ladies in the, in, the, uh, in the family. The men won't, unfortunately, but the ladies will. Um, so it can be a really nice experience doing that. It's something that's very enjoyable. And the bread is cooked in the ashes under the fire. So although you don't think it's something you want to eat, but it is very, very tasty. Yes, it does enhance the flavor, definitely. So I think all these experiences, I think, yeah, it should, it should be a longer stay then. Thank you. And uh, is it possible to stay in a caravansarai? Um, currently, none of, the, um, none of the eastern desert castles are booked out as hotels. So unfortunately not. But um, I think they're definitely worth a visit. And we have a, we've started um, a project out there with a local family 
um, cooking meals out there. And uh, so that's also worth doing. And for any people that are keen on bird watching, um, Azraq in the very east of Jordan is great for migration. So April and October, so two times that we like to send people there. Um, and it's great because there's the Azraq wetlands there and they get all the migration birds coming through. And there's a really nice Royal Society for the Conservation of Nature uh, lodge there that you can stay in. Um, but it's only a couple of hours from Amman as well. But that's that's good for bird watching, um, as is as are the all the other nature reserves in Jordan because as I said they're on the migration route. Oh, fantastic! In fact, you've just answered my uh, other question that was um, on uh, bird life and wildlife. So it's good to know that uh, I think more than other wildlife, there is a lot of birds there that you can see. Yeah, there? Jordan is mainly um, a bird watching destination. So um, there's, there's not a great amount of other wildlife there, although you can go to the Sharma Reserve and see the, uh, the, uh, the Ibex and things like that. So you can do those things in Jordan, but it's, um, it's all breeding and in captivity and the oryx that they breed there. So you can see those things, but very unlikely to see them actually in, um, in the desert or in any of the nature reserves. You can see them breeding captiv captivity in places, but it's great for bird watching. Great, thank you. And uh, you mentioned two seasons earlier, spring and autumn. So which season would be better to visit Petra in terms of the sunlight falling on it and, uh, you know, to be able well, to... Well, Jordan's very different. Jordan has a very similar, um, a similar um, daylight set of hours to the UK. So if you go to Jordan in the spring, then you get the longer days. So if you're there in March, April, end of May, early, even visiting Jordan, Jordan in mid-June, it's very nice. You get the very long days. You get the nice light mornings and the early evenings. So that's a great time to visit. Also in April and up to May, you get the crocuses and the greenery. Jurash is very green in the in the spring but by the time the autumn's come and there's been no rain since April then it's very what then the, you know all the grass is burnt and there's not much greenery there but actually Jordan is Jordan parts of Jordan are very green indeed so if you want to experience Jordan and be su and be surprised by it then I would suggest going in the in the springtime and if you want to go to Jordan and experience what you would think of being as a traditional desert country then I would say go in the go in the October time Okay, that's good to know too. Thank you. Um, How uh, is the food more non-veg based or are there good varieties for vegetarians too? There's fantastic varieties of vegetarians. Fantastic varieties. In fact, we, we don't even ask people if they're vegetarian when they go to a restaurant because there is such a variety for vegetarians that it's unbelievable. So um, that is something. And if you stay in the nature reserves run by the RSCN, then it is all vegetarian food. All vegetarian oh. food. So um, that's uh, because obviously they're about protecting the environment and the wildlife. So um, it's all vegetarian food. And it is some of the best food you will eat anywhere in Jordan. Anywhere in Jordan. Fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you. And can local homestays be arranged? We do do local homestays in the north mainly. Um, but yes, they can be arranged. And um, we can arrange meals with local families as well normally. And I'm sure that will be the case again once people start coming back to Jordan. Um, if you really want to experience Jordan from a, a kind of food perspective, I yes. would say that um, a meal with a local family in the north of Jordan is very different to the food that you will eat in the south. So it's, it's more inspired by vegetarian. It's got um, a lot more vegetables involved with it. And they don't do some of the traditional Bedouin dishes. And then when you're in the south, you could have some of the more traditional food in the south, like um, you can have a zarb, which is where they cook the lamb in a hole in the ground and the food is cooked in the hole of the ground, which they do in the desert. So you can have some great experiences in, in food experiences in Jordan. And some of the best food in Jordan is um, in some of the local, very cheap um, restaurants that, the, that, that are used daily by locals. In fact, on the roundabout near the Intercontinental Hotel, there's a kebab shop, which according to everybody in Jordan, sells the best kebabs in Jordan. Whether the, and you can stand there at night and you see BMWs and Mercedes pulling up, getting their kebabs to take home for them. And you see people walking down the streets buying them. It's, the food is amazing. That's great. In fact, as they say, you know, always patronize restaurants which are, uh, well, um, yeah, go to restaurants which are patronized by locals. 
Yes. Because then you know the food quality is going to be authentic there. Yes. Um, can I just, I've, I've seen a question here, which is that um, we said earlier that um, even locals will be in cafes drinking coffee. Yes. Do Jordanian women socialise or is it mostly men? Yeah. Um, in the older age groups, it is more traditional for men to go out. But in the younger age groups, so I would say anything under 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 50, under 40, um, mm -hmm. then you get both men and women out. And I think all I can say is that, um, speaking as a man, from what I understand from all the women that I've ever met that have gone to Jordan and travelled with us to Jordan and that we've spoken to in Jordan, they always feel very, very welcome wherever they go. And whether they're travelling as two women together, they feel comfortable going out to the cafes in the evening and um, sitting down and drinking tea and coffee or drinks or if they go to a bar that serves alcohol, they've always, I've always, the feedback we've always had is they've always felt very, very welcome. Thank you. And how are the roads in Jordan? Roads in Jordan are good. Very good. There aren't many of them. In fact, north to south, there's only three roads. Um, so there's the, uh, there's the King's Highway, yeah. there's the Desert Highway, and there's the, um, the Dead Sea Highway. And basically those three roads go up through the country. So um, it's, uh, it's a very easy place to travel through. Roads are, roads are pretty good. Pretty good. And there's not much traffic. Once you get outside of Amman, there's very little traffic in Jordan. Yes, in fact, that's what yeah we noticed. I mean, Oman, like any other city, uh, big city, is quite congested and crowded, and especially during rush hours. But once you exit, then it's a very smooth run. Yes, very smooth indeed. Yeah. And how's the public transport system to get between cities? Public transport system is okay. Okay, there are there are regular buses between um, Aqaba, Petra, Petra, and Amman, um, and um, in the north, there's a lot of um, kind of local taxis that go between Amman and Madaba or will take you down to the Dead Sea or, or and there are buses to Jurash. So the, 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 trans, the transport's quite good in Jordan. It's pretty good. Fantastic. And which is the most scenic route to use, would you say? Um, the most scenic route is probably the King's Highway that goes from Madaba down through Karak, Dana, Shobak and on to Petra but it's the route that takes the longest time. So um, it depends how much time you want to allocate on your tour for it, um, whether you want to stop at those places. Um, and although the country is small, but from Madaba to Karak um, is a couple of hours and then Karak down to Petra is about three hours. But if you go down the desert highway from Madaba to Petra is only about three and a half hours. Okay. But, the, but that is a very beautiful, there's a very beautiful road and there's some fantastic scenery there. Great, okay. And is it only totally here or also the eastern part of the country? Because uh, you are developing, I believe, um, you know, places which can be visited now in the eastern part of the country and we will soon be offering that to our clients. But uh, how are the roads there currently? Um, they're probably not as good because there isn't that much visitation out there. And um, I think, you know, the roads out to as far as Azraq Castle and the Azraq wetlands and through the and through the desert castles, that, that, that's a single single uh, lane highway. So two lanes, one either side and that and that's fine. A bit bumpy in places, but it wouldn't it definitely wouldn't stop you going. Um, and then there are roads that go straight through the desert as well. Um, but I think I think that's the least of. You know, that's not something that people need to worry about. The roads in Jordan are great and our drivers are fantastic. And if people want to go on a local bus, then that's fine. That's quite a great, a good experience. If they want to use local taxis around Amman, that's also very simple and easy to do. And there'll be enough people that, that speak English to help them to get by. Great. In fact, that would be something to look forward to. And in fact, for a um, uh, return client wanting to visit Jordan, uh, to visit the unexplored east, and which is something even we are waiting to, you know, kind of offer to our clients. And uh, uh, amongst the Nabaitin ruins, um, apart from Petra, are there any other in Jordan? Um, no, so Petra and Little Petra. Um, so that's the Nabataean site uh, in Jordan. Um, I think the, um, <clears throat> I think a point that you mentioned earlier about trying to get people wanting to go back. I think just because you've seen Petra or just because you've done a tour of Jordan doesn't mean to say that you've seen everything. And um, I've been nearly 50 times. And as we said earlier, I can't, I can't wait to 
to to go back there, which will be ha which will happen as soon as I can uh, I can spend more time there. So I think that Jordan is um, one of those countries that the more you go, the more you get out of it. I remember saying to a guide on something like my thirty second visit as we walked through the Sikh, "Oh, I haven't seen that before. Um, how long has that been here?" He said, "Oh, about two thousand years." <laughs> um, there is it is it is so rich, Petra. And the sites are so rich that you could you could spend you could spend a whole day in Jirash, but most people only spend a couple of hours there. You could spend a day in Umkais, but people spend a couple of hours there. So I think there's so much more to see. And then there's lots of other early Christian mosaics in Jordan, which are um, like Umar Asas, which are very well worth seeing if you're into that kind of history and uh, spending a bit more time. Um, in the south, a bit more time in Wadi Rum. There's some fantastic walks in Dana. In fact, the Dana to Petra Trek is can be four or five days long, and you walk from Dana through to Petra in the back door, and that really is a wonderful experience and something that we do for we can easily do and have done before for 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 our clients. So, um, if you want to visit Jordan and see it in a slightly different way, then think about walking the the National Trail. The Jordan Trail, which goes from the north to the south, has got some fantastic sections on it. The Dana Petra Trek is the um, kind of standout section for that. Um, but then from Petra to Wadi Rum, the first few days of that walk are beautiful, really beautiful, um, which we can organise. And if people want to do a little selection of day walks, if they wanted to walk around Umkais and they want to walk near Jirash, that can easily be arranged and they'd be walking on the Jordan Trail, visiting uh, walking through local villages in some places. Um, we have a microbrewery in Jordan that the Jordan Trail passes very close by. So if you like beer, then we can stop at the, the microbrewery. We have a fantastic um, wine um, maker in Jordan. So we can stop and taste some wine as well. So there's really lots to see in Jordan that uh, sometimes requires two, three or even four visits. I completely agree. I think, you know, adding all these experiences just gives it a different uh, flavor altogether. Even entering Petra from the rear entrance and visiting the whole site just appears to be entirely different from, you know. It's a, very, it's a very different view. And I think um, the first time I entered through the back door, it made me feel a little bit like, because we'd walked from Dana, we walked in the Petra, we spent four or five days hardly seeing anybody. And then we walked into this thriving city full of people. And it must have been how the Nabataeans felt when they came up through Arabia, through the desert, and they finally arrived in Petra and this city opened up before them and it was full of 30,000 people, um, people that lived there. And walking into Petra gives you that same experience. It's, you've, you've endured the desert, albeit from a slightly different route. And then you arrive in Petra. When you get to, by the time you get to Petra, nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, you walk down, Petra's alive and thriving and it, that must have the Nabataeans, I always think that's how the Nabataeans must have felt as they travelled up from Arabia, days, weeks, months without seeing anybody and then all of a sudden they arrived at this fantastic metropolis, this fantastic city. Wow, I <laughs> can imagine. And very quickly, could you just uh, tell us about Little Petra as to what you get to see there? Little Petra is a, there's a little Sikh and there's some monuments there and it that is used that's where they used to keep the camels apparently so um the the people used to come up from them from into petra there and that would be uh, a smaller settlement where they used to get it's a few miles away from petra um worth seeing worth we definitely visit there if you're walking into petra by the back door so they go to little petra and they come in by the back door and remember petra tickets are always valid for two days or three days two or three days depending which one um, they want to do so people want to buy so they can always go in two or three times so um and i would recommend that highly recommend that maybe day one coming in via the back door seeing petra that way then maybe in the evening doing petra by night and the following morning getting up early and going in and seeing petra um through the main seat and having that experience as well um i don't think you can go in enough personally that sounds a very good idea to hear on a three-day ticket definitely so I think that's all the questions we have there. And um, so our next two events are as shown here and look out for our newsletter and registration details on the events page. And as always, a recording of this event will also be available on the events page. 
Thank you again for joining us today. And thank you, jo uh, David, for an amazing tour of Jordan. We can't wait to explore this unique region and the stunning landscapes. And I look forward to seeing all of you in two weeks um, on our virtual tour of yet another Levant country, Lebanon. Um, David, you might want to see all those uh, compliments for you there. Uh, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Enjoy your evening and stay safe. Goodbye. My pleasure.